The UK's first vegetable oil powered trawler is undergoing trials in the North Sea. The UK's fishing fleet is powered by diesel. It's hoped that by burning vegetable oil instead, far less harmful carbon dioxide will end up in the atmosphere because the plants used to make the oil will have absorbed CO2 when they were growing. Here's Simon. Dawn in Grimsby's fishing harbour and the Jubilee Quest, one of the dwindling band of trawlers here, is chugging back into port. It's a boat with a difference because its diesel engine has been converted to run on vegetable oil and in the last few weeks it's proved reliable enough to travel far away from the haven of Grimsby. A typical trawler burns 13,500 litres of diesel on a 10-day trip, emitting 37 tonnes of the global warming gas carbon dioxide. Compare that to emissions from a family car of around 2 tonnes of CO2 in a year, and you see that there's a big incentive to find alternative fuels for all large vessels at sea. The owners can't afford for the Jubilee Quest not to work, so the boat is back on a full fishing schedule. Its converted engine can run on either vegetable oil or diesel, which gave the crew a bit of peace of mind when they first ventured out. From this short fishing trip, there are 50 boxes to take straight into Grimsby's fish market. 190, right, 160, 65, 70. This morning, most of the fish on sale has been brought into Grimsby by truck, much of it from Iceland. So, the Jubilee Quest's catch is the freshest in the market. There are cod, codling, whiting and ray and several other North Sea species to be sorted by size and weight. Hardly anyone here knows that these fish have arrived in a boat powered by cooking oil. There's a lot of talk nowadays about conserving fish stocks and creating a sustainable fishery. But what we're interested in is creating a sustainable fishing fleet, or what's left of it, with low carbon emissions and low pollution. About 20 anywhere, about 20, about five. Andrew, part owner of the boat, auctions it all off in a few minutes. The catch fetches £5,000, which means it's time for us to go for a spin. So we're now officially running on vegetable power and there's something very appropriate about that because this is the fish and chip boat it's uh, bringing in the fish and it's running on chip fat vegetable oil does produce carbon dioxide when it's burned but the plants from which it's derived suck in the gas from the air as they grow so over the years the co2 emitted is balanced by co2 absorbed that's the theory the performance as far as we can tell has been exactly the same as the diesel we've lost no power by using the vegetable oil against the diesel. We're carrying three tanks of the oil and one tank of diesel. Right, so you need to be sure then. We've, I don't know how far out you get with it, but... We've got to be confident, because we're working up, uh, up to 300 miles from home, so we, we've, it's got to be, it's got to work. But it has done so far? It's been very good at the moment. Good. And we have got quite confident in it. This is the box which shows you what's happening with the uh, vegetable oil, and it's a dual fuel system. It does use diesel but you can see it switched at the moment onto biofuel and that's the vegetable oil, so it's running on that. To the engine room. Okay. The engineer who has masterminded this conversion right. is Mike Lawton. So what, what can you see here, down here, first of all? That's the engine, I take This it. is the main drive engine, so this is an 18-litre diesel engine. OK. And over in the corner, what we've added additionally to this vessel is a heavy oil lifting pump. Right. And what's that lifting, then? This is, we're standing on top of fuel tanks, so this pump is lifting high viscosity plant oil, vegetable oil, from the fuel tanks underneath our feet, up to here, through this black pipe behind us, and then over into what we call a daily service tank. What's happening to it there? If you put your hand on it, you feel it's nice and warm. So what we're doing is taking the waste heat energy from the main drive engine, we're yeah. piping the coolant through a small heat exchanger in the bottom of this tank, and this is raising the temperature of the vegetable oil. So Which, and that, the effect of that is it, it thins it out? Yes, we drop the viscosity so it's a lot thinner. That then feeds from this tank under our feet through another heat exchanger, which heats it up further so the viscosity drops even lower, and then it looks exactly like diesel fuel to the engine. And then that runs the engine? And that's into the engine and running. As a one-off, this conversion has cost a fortune, but Mike has had financial backing from a government agency called Sea Fish. Diesel is, you know, it's a dirty fuel, isn't it, in comparison to vegetable oil? Absolutely. Far, far, um, you've got much greater emissions you, uh, from sulphur. Um, 
NOx gases and also your CO2 or greenhouse gases as everybody at home would understand them. Um, and, and vegetable oil reduces all of those significantly. Um, so yes, there's but if a big you were going to, you know, God forbid, discharge um, diesel at sea or if a, a boat sank or something like that, you'd prefer it to be vegetable oil that was yes. inside uh, that boat. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because it, uh, the vegetable oil will have a far reduced uh, impact on the environment and degrades in half the time. Thanks for showing us that. And okay. Well, I guess the reason for, for doing this envi is environmental. Two reasons, yes. One is environmental. We can massively reduce the CO2 footprint uh, of this boat. Typically in a fishing trip, in one fishing trip, this boat would release 40 tonnes of carbon dioxide. So if we can run on a near CO2 neutral fuel, like vegetable oil, then we massively reduce that. And the other reason is economic. Hopefully, we can make vegetable oils cheaper than diesel. Uh, how do the finances work out for a, a, a boat like this that would normally run on diesel? Yeah, it's quite tough to compete on price with fresh oils at the moment because there's no road fuel duty to, to pay on, on, on marine fuel, which is how we make the cost saving on land. So at the moment, we're competing against the raw material cost of fuel, and that's near impossible to compete with fresh oils. But the roadmap is to move to used oils, which are a lot cheaper. And in the long run, how do you think this can work most effectively? Ideally, where we want to get to is running this vessel on tallow oil. What's that? Tallow oils are, are waste oils, a byproduct of cooking. Um, it's the thick oil left at the bottom of your frying pan after you cook some sausages. We think we can clean that up and turn it into a usable fuel. But the real challenge is the fact it's solid at room temperature. It's exactly like a pack of butter. So we're trying to run a fishing vessel ultimately on a solid fuel. There are already cars, trucks and buses driving on vegetable oil and often it is recycled oil from restaurants and food manufacturers. Now thanks to the Jubilee Quest, the vegetable revolution is spreading over the ocean waves. So there is tax payable, there's duty levied on vegetable oil like anything else, but what is the tax regime like? Does it encourage people to use vegetable oil? Um, well, in, in, with the shipping it's, it's even because a, a, a fishing vessel will not pay duty whether it's um, diesel or vegetable oil, and that's similar to a farm vehicle as well. So there's no particular incentive there to use the vegetable oil because it's quite expensive to get new vegetable oil. Um, on the roads, there is an incentive. You pay 47.1 pence in duty per litre um, for your diesel or petrol, and there's a 20 pence um, reduction if you use a biofuel. Not all vegetable oil users get it, but in theory there's a, a 20 pence reduction. But some people say, well, why not get rid of the duty completely on biofuels if you want to incentivise people to use them? And, and that's a topic which I put to the minister in charge of this area, Ian Pearson, who is known as the Minister for Climate Change. Certainly there's an incentive at the moment to stimulate the growth of a biofuels market. And the obligation that we're po proposing, the renewable transport fuels obligation, is actually saying that by 2010, 5% of fuel must come from, uh, from renewable sources like biofuels. Now, so that's an obligation, but you could also get rid of the duty to make it so much cheaper that you'd be mad not to use biofuels. Yeah, well, we need to look, as I say, at what works in terms of providing incentives, and that's what the, the Treasury is very good at. We want to see value for money for taxpayers' money, and we want to see green objectives ach achieved. And we believe that we can do both of those through having the right range of policy instruments, whether that be a renewables obligation when it comes to transport fuels, or whether it be uh, through incentives uh, uh, driven by the tax system. So it doesn't appear they're going to do that yet. But interestingly enough, they are doing it in some other countries. Germany has had zero duty on some biofuels. Um, and in the Irish Republic, um, they have a system where some producers of these plant oils that are used in cars, for instance, there's no duty payable on what they're um, supplying to the cars, which then drive, much more cheaply than they would if they were using diesel. OK, Simon, thanks.